everyone. Welcome to our channel, Rebecca Stew in the Crew. I'm Rebecca. Today we have some fun Dollar Tree DIY projects with some reviews of their new products. So let's go over the supplies first for our first two things that we're going to make. I'm going to use two of these cosmetic bags from the Dollar Tree. And we are also going to use two of the iron-on transfers that are new. They put out a few months ago. It comes with this parchment paper. We're also going to need an iron with a cotton setting. And then we'll need some type of a cotton towel. So let's get crafty. So it says on the back here to use a cotton type fabric and to lay it on a hard, smooth, flat surface. It also says that you need to set the iron to a cotton setting or um, preset your fabric for the heat tolerance. Do not use steam. And then you need to protect your transfer with the parchment paper sheet. You also want to iron over top of the transfer for about 45 to 60 seconds and not to move the iron around, but you do want to press firmly, ensuring that all of the transfer surface will be ironed on. So I have this plastic lining inside of the cosmetic bags and I don't want to melt the plastic together. So I took the backing off of the iron-on transfer sheet. It's like a thin cardboard and I just stuck that inside of the cosmetic bag to keep it from um, melting and sticking together. And then I cut the words off of this flamingo. The person I was giving it to, the wording on the bag didn't really match who I was giving it to. It just wouldn't work for them. And so I cut those off. And then I trimmed the plastic down a little bit just because it was a little too large for this cosmetic bag. So you can trim them down and revamp them any way you want or even just move the words around depending on what you're putting it on. So then you want to cover your iron-on transfer with a piece of parchment paper because you don't want the iron to touch that plastic sheeting. It will melt to the iron. And then again, since I have plastic coating inside of these cosmetic bags, I took my cotton towels and put them on either side of the iron-on transfer to protect the material um, from the iron. So then I take my iron and I push firmly down over top the entire transfer for a full 60 seconds. Once it was done, I just removed the parchment paper and then it says to allow that um, plastic sheeting to cool completely before you remove it. So once it was cooled to the touch, I slowly peeled it back. Now, if you see any part of your transfer lifting up, just replace that piece of plastic, put the parchment paper back on top and then iron it a little bit longer. And as you can see, the cardboard worked really well to keep the lining from gluing itself together. And it ironed on really well. I don't know what material this bag is made out of. It doesn't say on the tag. It feels like a velvety, like velour, but it worked really well on this one. So then I use uh, the Adventure Awaits transfer on the purple bag. I did the same exact procedure. And I did have the cardboard inside of the bag, but I didn't put the towels on either side. And the transfer was a little bit larger and I ended up getting the plastic on the inside to stick together a little bit. It didn't actually melt together, but it did stick together. So if you do these velvet bags, make sure that you have paper large enough to um, completely cover where you're going to be ironing so that you don't melt that plastic together. But it turned out really well and I was able to pull it apart pretty easily. And these are the first two projects done. I love how they turned out. So now we'll do project number three. We are going to go over the supplies list. So we'll need these um, iron-on transfer sheets. They're like a gemstone or like a sequence. We'll use a cotton t-shirt from the Dollar Tree. It's 50% polyester, 50% cotton. We'll also need an iron. We'll need some towels. And then we will also need a lint roller and some parchment paper or tissue paper. So let's get crafty making our third project here. So the backing has these picture directions on, which are pretty clear and self-explanatory. So what you want to do after you wash and dry your shirt, you want to iron it smooth so you don't have any wrinkles where you are going to put your iron on transfer sheet. And then use a lint roller to take any little hairs or anything on the shirt off so that it's out of the way and doesn't interfere with um, the transfer transferring onto your uh, fabric there. So then a great rule of thumb is to take your hand 
And about four fingers down from the neckline is about where your design should go on a t-shirt. So I measured it and then just kind of eyeballed it and then stick the transfer sheet onto the t-shirt. And you did need to remove that um, backing that was on the transfer. So now we're going to cover this with some parchment paper. So the directions say to take your iron on a like cotton setting and then you want to move the iron around with medium to firm pressure for a full 60 seconds. You want to keep moving the iron in a circular motion all over to make sure that you get all of the sequence um, with the iron. So once I had that side done, it says to turn your fabric inside out and then go back over the transfer with your iron again for another full minute. This is to help make sure that you've got all of that glue on the back of those sequins melted and sticking to the shirt. So it's a great idea to make sure you do this step. Don't skip it. This is really going to help your um, sequins stick to the shirt. So once that plastic sheeting has cooled down, I'm going to slowly start to remove it to make sure none of the sequins are lifting up. Again, if any of the sequins lift up, just remove, I'm sorry, replace that plastic filming back on top, put your parchment paper back on and go ahead and hit it with the iron again to make sure you have it completely uh, stuck down to the t-shirt. And you do want to pull this sheeting off slowly, which isn't hard to do because it's pretty stuck on there once you have it ironed on. And I did have a few little rhinestones lift up on the left hand side. And you can see the glue. I think that's just because I was pushing too hard and moving the iron. Um, so you want to push firm, but you don't want to push too hard. I think I'm the one that actually messed up the sequence there. So that's our t-shirt done. And now I'll make project number four. We'll go over the supplies for this one. We're going to make a pillow sham. So we're going to use the Crafter Square Iron-On Sequence Transfer. Again, we'll need an iron. I'm going to use a 100% polyester pillowcase from the Dollar Tree. We'll need some cotton towels, some parchment paper, and then we'll need a small pillow. We're also going to use some ribbon. We'll need some scissors and some hot glue. So let's get crafty making our last project. So I didn't wash the pillowcase. I just opened it up and then I ironed all of the wrinkles out because I really want this nice and smooth to be able to put my iron on transfer on. So we're going to make a small pillow sham. So once we have all of the wrinkles out, we're going to take the two ends and fold the pillow over so it's in half. And just make sure you have it lined up really well. Try to get all the edges and corners lined up as best you can. Smooth out all your wrinkles and then you want to take that black um, protective sheeting off of the back of your transfer. And then again, it's very sticky. I accidentally grabbed hold of the pillowcase here because I got it too close before I had it lined up the way I wanted it. So I had to try to peel that back off and then smooth all the wrinkles out in the fabric again and then stick it on where I wanted it. So be careful you don't get the transfer too close to your fabric until you have it positioned the way you want to stick it to the fabric. So then we're going to put the parchment paper over top and we're going to iron it the same way. And I didn't push as hard this time. Then you want to flip the fabric over and iron the back of the rhinestone. Since this is 100% polyester, I did use the parchment paper on the back as well. Then you want to let the film cool down before you remove it. And again, pull slowly, making sure that all of your sequins are stuck to the fabric. And repeat the steps again if you need to, if it's not sticking completely. So now we want to fold our pillow in half again, but we want to have our design on the inside of the pillowcase this time. We want to line up all of the edges really well and the corners. You want them as even as you can because we're going to make the sham and we want to make sure it's a perfect rectangle. And take whatever ribbon you choose. I chose to use the silver ribbon that matched the pillowcase and we're going to cut 
six pieces that are about 14 inches long and we're going to glue those on the top the middle and the bottom of both sides of the pillowcase so we're going to just start with um, this side we're going to position the ribbon where we like and then just put a little dot of hot glue underneath and stick the ribbon to the pillowcase We'll do that for all three on this side and then we'll do the same exact step on the other side. So I'm just gluing these about an inch in. And then on this side, you just want to eyeball it and try to make sure you're getting the ribbon kind of close to the same spots that you glued them on on the opposite side. Now we want to take our pillowcase and flip it over keeping it together as best you can. And then we're going to take those um, ribbons that we glued on on the other side and we're just going to add a little bead of hot glue and create these loops on both sides of the pillow. This helps to be able to get the ribbon in exactly the same spot on both sides of your pillow. And it just makes it look a lot neater when the whole project is finished if you keep it together to glue these on So while the glue is setting up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom of the pillow and we're going to glue that together so that we create a full circle and we'll just have the openings on the sides where the ribbons are. So I'm just going to flip this little edge of the pillow up and then we'll apply a bead of hot glue all the way down along the bottom edge and we'll glue this together. And this will ensure that our seam is on the inside of the pillow so it's nice and smooth all the way around on the outside. Once I have these two ends glued together, we have of course the opening to the pillowcase on this end as well. So what we want to do is just flip that little end up and then glue that together so it's closed. That'll help it lay flat. And take your scissors and put them inside of the loop, pull it tight, and then just cut. And this will help you get your ribbon exactly the same length on both sides. And we're going to cut all six. If you chose a ribbon that tends to fray, you can actually take um, a lighter and you don't want to touch the ribbon, but you can get it close to the end and it will melt the little fibers on the end. Um, so that it doesn't fray. So now that we have all the ribbon cut, all we're going to do is take our pillowcase and flip it so it's on the right side and that our design with the sequence is now back on the outside of the pillow. And that top edge there that we glued together, we will need to iron, but you wanna iron it, um, you know, with not too hot of an iron, you don't wanna melt the glue any more than it already is. You just want to hit it lightly with an iron. So now that we have that all smoothed out, we're just going to insert our pillow. The travel size pillows you can pick up for about $3 at Walmart are the perfect size for these pillow shams. Once I have my pillow in, all I do is I tie these little bows on all of the ribbons up the sides of the pillow. And then we have this really high end looking pillow that only cost us her pillow sham. It costs us about $2 to make the pillow sham, maybe about $2 and 10 cents with the ribbon. And then of course the cost of the pillow. But if you have a small pillow, then you can just use one that you have around the house and then the whole thing costs you about $2 to make. And I just love how this turned out. I think it looks really pretty. I love the gold sequence against the gray of the pillowcase. I thought it turned out really pretty. And there's our pillow sham. Now someone had asked me if you could paint on the glass etching that we did a few weeks ago. So um, to answer your question, yes and no. So I used a bunch of different kinds of paint. I tried acrylic, oil paint. Um, I even used the kind of paint you use to paint like little sun catchers from the Dollar Tree. And 
it just doesn't seem to work very well. It's hard to keep it right on the glass etching without it being all over the place and then it's hard to clean up. So I found just by trial and error that Sharpie markers were probably my favorite way to color the glass etching, though there is another way which I'll show in a second. But what you want to do is just take your Sharpie markers or any kind of a permanent marker and color over top of the glass etching and then you take a paper towel before it's completely dry and you just want to rub the um, excess color off of the glass before it's completely dry and then you can actually go back in if you want the coloring a little bit darker once the marker is completely dry you can add a second layer and it helps darken it just a little bit but this is actually the most vibrant that I got the colors to show up was definitely by using the Sharpie markers. So all the other paints, like I said, they either didn't stick or the cleanup, trying to get it off of all the spots around the lettering and things was just a mess. And I like that the Sharpies, you could actually layer the colors and it didn't wipe off the colors underneath. And it was really easy to clean up around all of the spaces where you don't want the coloring to be. So then we also used um, some paint markers. These are the Jot brand paint markers from the Dollar Tree. These work as well. You wanna do the process exactly the same. You want to add the paint or the coloring and then wipe it off before it's dry, which is going to leave some of the paint behind. I didn't find it to be as vibrant and colorful as the Sharpie markers were. And it actually left like a lot of paint smeared around the lettering which was a lot more time consuming to clean up so i tried a couple different colors to see if darker colors or brighter colors showed up i think the metallic colors work the best the silver and the gold the um pink and blue worked fairly well the black worked really well i did that around the edge here um, of the little home that i made i feel like that probably showed up the best out of all of the colors but again, it was pretty time consuming to have to clean up all of the paint that didn't wipe off. So I had to take some alcohol and cotton swabs and then go around all of the lettering and clean it up. It came off fairly easy. It was just time consuming and you don't get a lot of color left behind. So that's why I just feel like the Sharpie markers were probably your best bet to color the glass etching if that helps. I've seen online other people have used um, alcohol inks. Um, I didn't have any, so I didn't try those. And I just have no need to buy them, so I just didn't even try those. But you could look those up. There's some videos online of people using alcohol inks on the glass etching. So I hope that helps answer your question. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, seeing how all the iron-on transfers Dollar Tree has started to carry at work. I think they work really well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this DIY video, I would encourage you to check out some of our other Dollar Tree DIY videos. I try to post those every single Thursday. And of course, on Friday, we always do our weekly What is New at the Dollar Tree video. And I go to quite a few different Dollar Trees and combine all of the pictures of the week into one video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Have a great day, everyone.